Conservative new media viewers, Jeremy Lin fans around the world, what's up? It's me, PFE Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. We're here to discuss a frustrating 108-107 to Brooklyn Nets loss to Dint to the Philadelphia 76ers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Sixers improved to 6 and 20 on the year, Nets fall to 7 and 18. Before I get started, I want to say that the next game coming up, which will be against the Toronto Raptors, that's likely to be the final game that I do before the holidays. I think I will take the next 5 games off to, to spend time with family and all. And I believe I will be back on January 2nd for, I think, the games against the Utah Jazz or something like that. But I'm going to miss five games, just to let people know that. Now, before I get into this game too much or too heavily, I want to talk about a couple of quick things. Um, One of them actually is from this game, and two of the other things are just more in general. The first thing is, the good thing about this game if you're a Jeremy Lin fan, is that Coach Atkinson drew up two plays for Jeremy at the end of the game. First, he drew up a three-pointer, which Jeremy missed. And then something else was, I believe, drawn up for a, for a Boyan, who hit a three-pointer. And then Coach Atkinson drew up another three-point play for Jeremy. So what's good is that Coach Atkinson trusts Jeremy. He is he runs and designs plays for Jeremy, and even though Jeremy missed the first three pointer, Coach Atkinson still drew up the second three pointer for him. That's really good, and shows a lot of dedication to Jeremy from Coach Atkinson. So if you're a Jeremy Lin fan, you have to be happy about that. Now the second thing I want to talk about is how the Nets approach the game in terms of how they rest players in terms of how many minutes players play, in terms of this performance team and metrics and all this stuff, because there's a lot of fans right now who are really upset with this, and I understand why. And I wasn't certain until tonight if this was a organization philosophy or not. But because they talked about it during the game, now it's very clear that it is an organizational approach. The Brooklyn Nets are extremely cautious about injuries. They have a new performance team, which is basically medicine, physical therapists. They use metrics about how when do players perform their best and how many minutes and how many minutes should they play at one time and all this stuff. Various teams around the NBA are doing this. This is kind of a new science, so to speak. The Nets are probably using it as extensively or more than any other team. The upside of this, the goal of this is to maximize performance and minimize risk. One of the reasons why the Nets are probably doing this is because they one of their key players is Brooke Lopez. And Brooke Lopez has had repeated injuries to his lower body throughout his career. So one of the things you have to figure out as a team is how do we keep Brooke from getting hurt again? And this is why you will see Brooke will play maybe five minutes in a quarter at the start, and then they'll take him out. This happened in the first quarter of tonight's game, in the third quarter of tonight's game, even though Brooke was playing great in the first quarter. They took him out. On some teams, or in the past, that wouldn't have happened. In other words, you keep the player in while he's playing well. And also, the theory is, basketball players need to develop a rhythm so if you're taking guys out of the game too quickly they never find their rhythm so the way that brooklyn is approaching is much different than that you're gonna play however many minutes they determine you're gonna play and then you're coming out doesn't matter if you're hot or cold or anything it's much more just by the book by the numbers 
And listening to Coach Atkinson talk about this the other day in regards to Jeremy, it really sounds like it, it's not his decision. It's the decision has been made that this is how the organization is going to approach it. And that's it, which means that Coach Atkinson doesn't seem to have the power to overturn that. That's the way they're going to do it. Okay, if you know that, then you can adjust to it. You can say, look, I'm only going to play in a seven-minute segment here, so i got to get it going. So you, you can adapt to it, I'm sure, but it's much different. And I know various people were tweeting me during the game, including a couple of people who played college basketball, and they're like, look, this is <laughs> – this doesn't work and guys aren't going to want to play here because of this because guys want heavier minutes stars want real minutes they don't want limitations of maybe 32 minutes a game they want to be able to play 40 minutes a game if they need to and so on it's just i mean this is what it is apparently and we're going to have to adapt to it as fans the good part of this there is an upside. There's a reason why they're doing this. Again, the goal is guys don't get hurt. Your team stays fresh during the game. Like guys never get tired. And when they come in, rather than kind of managing their energy, they can go all out. Because they know I'm only playing five minutes right now, so I'm going to put all my energy out there. And it forces you to develop your bench like your bench becomes extremely important in this because they play nearly as much in some cases as the starters do the weaknesses of this are that you have to rely on your bench a lot more and so if your bench is weak you're going to have problems and in this game tonight at the start of the fourth quarter the Nets bench allowed Philadelphia to go on an 11 to nothing run and that pretty much was the game and how this game ended up being lost and and the lineup was like um Scola, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Levert, Whitehead and maybe Anthony Bennett. I'm not trying to put I'm not trying to be rude to these guys or anything. But this is because of how the Nets performance team approaches the game. You're going to rely on that type of thing. And so if your bench is not good, you're going to have problems. And we saw this, I think, in, in tonight's game. And we saw it in the last game against the Magic. It's And it's... <sighs> I think that this can work... But it's going to take time for it to work. It's going to take, it might not be this season. It might have to take in the next season when there's more talent on the team. The coach knows the team better in terms of what, what groupings work best together. Like who's the best bench unit? Who's the best starting unit to put together? What five players? Uh, and once guys have to get used to, I'm only going to get... 30 minutes in this game or 31 minutes and so forth and so I think that's a lot of frustration in these last two games fans know these games were winnable and the Nets tried to win them but they tried to win them within a certain structure you're only going to play this many minutes you're only going to play that many minutes and so it it's that lack of flexibility fuels the frustration you know if in other words if jeremy played three more minutes we would have won if brooke played three more minutes we would have won now jeremy's a unique case because he's coming back from injury so in other words his minutes are going to go up per game but they're not there yet brooke i think has again he has a set number of minutes they want him to play he played 32 minutes tonight and that's probably about 32, 33 minutes, I would guess, and this is just totally a guess, is probably about as many minutes I would imagine that the Nets want to play any of their players. 
at least that's my understanding and just observation uh so jeremy's maybe you know 10 minutes away from that right now and i would imagine again as he continues his comeback they'll keep adjusting that up um so we just have to i mean that's how they're going to do it right now so it's unfortunately there's going to be some uh some growing pains in that particularly from the bench that's that's where the weakness is in other words they're playing six bench players well if you cut that down to three maybe you win more games well it just doesn't seem like that's what they're going to do in terms of the way that they manage people's minutes for the team the way they want to do it optimally what this will look like when it works will be the team doesn't get hurt much uh, over the course of a season because guys are managed so much and they should be able to stay healthy. They're able to play maximum effort when they're out there. You wear other teams out within a game because you're fresh and maybe they're playing fewer men and they get tired. That's why the Nets play at such a high pace. They want to run and run, run, run. The theory being, we keep in fresh bodies, you get tired, we don't get tired. And over the course of season, you get hurt, we don't get hurt. So this can work, but it's not working yet. And we're in year one of the new foundation and the new culture of the Nets, and it isn't fully operational yet. And so that's where we're at. But there's, again, there's a method here, and I can see how it could work, but we have to get from where we're at now to the point in which it does work. And the talent and and everything just doesn't seem like it's completely there yet. And so, unfortunately, we're going to have stuff like this. And uh, obviously, this makes it a lot harder in terms of making the playoffs and getting to 500, having an even record, and so on and so forth. So that's that's my thought about that whole thing. And, and like I said, I can see it. I mean, if players don't get hurt, then you win. Because one of the things that hurts teams so much is guys getting injured. So if you can prevent that, you are ahead of the game. But it, it, it still has to all work. And, and right now, the Nets are 7 and 18, so it isn't working yet. Now, the final thing I wanted to say before I'll talk more about the game specifically is... When you're, if you're a Jeremy Lin fan, I will very much tell you on this season, do not look at his numbers per game. And that's because Jeremy is playing fewer minutes, and he's had a number of games like today where he's going to have to build back up to his full playing role. And as a starter, I would, if you want to compare and look at how Jeremy's doing versus other players, Instead of comparing per game statistics, I would tell you compare per 36 minutes statistics. Most basketball reference sites like basketballreference.com, you can look at the entire league based upon per 36 minutes. It lets you kind of standardize if everybody played 36 minutes, how many points and rebounds and assists would they have. That's how we're going to have to look at Jeremy right now and maybe for the entirety of the season because he's had so many games where he hasn't played that many minutes it makes his numbers come down it lessens him or you can look at something like per which is minutes independent so that will give you a comparison uh a a fair comparison but if you want to look at raw statistics like points rebounds and assist look at per 36 that's how you, I would con, uh, approach comparing J- Jeremy's statistics. Okay, let's talk about this game in specific. Again, what happened in this game was, was very close. Philadelphia is talented. As I said in the last video, they just kind of, they haven't figured it all out yet either. But they have talent. And the bench allowed Philly to go on an 11 nothing run early in the fourth quarter while Brooke was out, while Jeremy Lin was out. And then when Jeremy came back into the game, the Nets were down something like eight points, and they just they made up seven of them. They just couldn't make up eight of them, and that's why they ended up losing the game. Uh, Jeremy played well in this game. Look at his numbers. 
16 points, two rebounds, four assists. He did have three turnovers, so you know whatever four to three assist to turnover ratio. It's not what we're looking for. Still, his numbers are good since he's come back. Uh, the the are 14 assists to five turnovers. That's nearly three to one. That's very good. Shot the ball well, five of ten from the field. He played 22 minutes, which means that his minutes restriction went up from 20 minutes to 22 minutes in this game. So they they put him in for the final seven minutes of the fourth quarter. Good. That's a little bit of an improvement. Maybe next game he plays 24 or 25 minutes. Shot two of seven from the three-point line, four or five from free throws, two steals, and his plus-minus was a plus six, which is really good. Jeremy had two steals near the end of this game that almost helped Brooklyn win this game. Jeremy did miss a three-pointer late in this contest. I said the coach drew up a play for him. The play was he ran a little curl play, caught the ball, and shot it off a turnaround. He missed that, but then they ran another play for him where he got the ball in the right corner, and he shot and hit a three-point shot. Some people were unhappy with me because they thought I was too critical in the video of Jeremy in the last game. And I said, well, maybe some of his decisions weren't great and everything. In this game, his decisions were really, really good. He had one or two maybe that weren't spot on, but overall I thought he made excellent decisions in this game with the ball. When he should shoot, when he should pass, who to pass to, so forth. I would say he had at least five unconverted assist opportunities in this game, meaning he passed the ball to someone and they were not able to convert on the shot attempt. So he, I, I thought he ran a really good game in this, in this outing tonight much better than he did in the last game overall even though his statistics were a little bit better in the last game uh so i thought he played really well he was the third leading scorer on the team he is not starting yet and he is having to play with different groups that makes it hard because you you can't you have to get a rhythm with your teammates not only do you as an individual player need a rhythm, you need a rhythm with the guys you're playing with. And Jeremy's kind of playing with different groupings and stuff. That's something that happens with all these constant uh, substitutions by the Nets. And that hasn't fully come together yet. The good thing for the Nets is that I believe they are now fully healthy. The two players who were inactive for tonight's game were Chris McCullough and Spencer Dinwiddie. And I think both of them are healthy. As I said, you have 15 players on your roster. You're only allowed to dress 13 players. But I don't think anybody is, is hurt. So now with everybody available, now the coach and the team really should be able to build up the chemistry figure out the the substitution pattern, and so forth. There could be changes upcoming. As we said, we are now in the kind of prime time for the trading season in the NBA. But as I mentioned in the previous video, I think what the Nets will do will kind of be, let's see what we have, and then we might make some trades. So kind of stay with this group let them play for a while, figure out who you want, who you don't want, and then maybe they make a trade. Of course, if something becomes available and there's somebody that the Nets really want, maybe they will make a deal. But my guess is they'll let them play for a while and hopefully the team will stay healthy. But that's one thing I'll say about this game. Nobody got hurt. Everybody was healthy. For the Nets, that's an improvement. And and so it things should be able to get better from here. Quick statistics, Joel Embiid had a huge game for the 76ers, 33 points, 10 rebounds, 33 points is a career high. He's extremely talented. He's a gigantic guy. I mean, he's like 7 foot 2, 7 foot 1, and about 275 pounds. He's great, and he's had a lot of injury issues the last couple of years. He's on a minutes restriction right now. He is only allowed to play 28 minutes. If he can stay healthy, 
and be able to play free minutes, he's going to dominate in the league. I mean, he's just amazing. And unfortunately, he performed huge today, and he was probably the biggest problem that the Nets had, along with Ersan Ilyasova, who had 22 points. For the Nets, the Nets had five players in double figures, led by Brooke Lopez, who almost had a triple-double. 22 points, nine rebounds, eight assists. Brooke played excellent in this game. He really played well, and he particularly played well in the first half. Boyan, 14 points, six rebounds. Isaiah Whitehead continues his steady improvement, 11 points, one rebound. No assists, but also no turnovers. Joe Harris, excellent game tonight, 19 points, two rebounds, two assists. As I, you know how many times I've praised Joe Harris this season. I watched Joe when he played for Cleveland the last two years. I always felt he had the talent. He just wasn't getting the opportunity. Joe can play. He's limited. There's certain things he can't do, but there's certain things he does really, really well. He shoots incredibly well. He was big today, and he got to play down the stretch rather than boy on for most of the stretch run, and I thought that was a good decision by Coach because Boyan wasn't shooting well today, and Joe Harris was. And as I mentioned previously, Jeremy Lin, 16 points, two rebounds, four assists. Unfortunately, I think Karis Levert's, I don't know if he's regressing, or maybe they they want to play him very low minutes. Because remember, he was out for months with a stress fracture surgery on one of his feet. So they might only want to play him 10 to 15 minutes per game. It's unfortunate because he's really talented. But I thought he was starting to surge. Now it's kind of like he's like a bit player. And that could just very well be that this really cautious approach by the Nets. That's too bad because Brooklyn could use his talent. Um, Rondi Hollis Jefferson, seven points, five rebounds. He kind of forced some things tonight. wasn't wasn't as good as he could have been, but uh, his stats weren't that bad overall. Sean Kilpatrick, seven points, four rebounds. Trevor Booker, five points, six rebounds. And that pretty much rounds things out. Lu- Luis Scola, four points, three rebounds. Trevor Booker continues to sometimes over-dribble the basketball. He'll get the rebound, and he will bring the ball up rather than handing it off to the point guard. Sometimes it works pretty well. The truth is he needs to hand the ball off a little bit more because I think that that's, that's the best choice to make. You want the point guard to be able to make the decisions because Trevor will sometimes have turnovers that are just really unnecessary. The biggest statistical difference between the two teams in tonight's game was that the 76ers got 14 offensive rebounds and Brooklyn only had seven. Really, everything else is almost a, a, you know really, really close to one another in terms of other statistics. So, look, it's a tough loss. Just like Orlando was a tough loss. Fans know we could have won both of these games. But it just didn't work out that way. And I, I think that it's clear that the playoffs are getting further and further away right now. Which, look, that, that may have been the way it was. Maybe it was always going to be that way. Or, or certainly there was a good chance it was going to be that way after Jeremy Lin got hurt and was out for six weeks. Still... I'm not discouraged or dismayed. It's a shame that we might not be able to win as many games as we could this year. However, the way that I feel is this is a long-term project. If the team can stay healthy now, and that's the more most important thing of everything, which is why the performance team is so hardcore in the way that they are, If the team stays healthy, things will continue to get better. There were late-game execution issues tonight, the same way that there were late-game executions in Orlando, and that's because of lack of repetition, guys being injured, and not having enough time to work on it because guys have been injured and in and out of the lineup. So that will improve. Hopefully, guys can just stay healthy, and it's going to get better and better. Thing is, the team is playing. They're not playing poorly. They, they've played pretty decently the last two games. They just had a little bit of a tough stretch here or there, and that cost them the game. 
They're playing hard. They're playing well. They are improving. And uh, even if they don't win a lot, they're going to be in most of these games. And it will get better over time. Unfortunately for the team, the next three games are going to be difficult. And so can end up playing really well and still lose all three of them. But, of course, we don't know that until you actually play the games. But I don't feel... I am I wish we would have won these two games. But in the larger picture, I feel good. I, in fact, I feel really good and hopeful if we can stay healthy. And particularly the core guys like Jeremy, like Brooke, like Sean Kilpatrick. I, I know the team's going to improve from here, and I'm looking forward to it. So I actually feel, I I feel great. I just I want the team to keep growing from here. So that's pretty much it for tonight. Let's talk about the next game coming up. I said the next three games are difficult, and the first of those three games comes up two days from now, Tuesday, December twentieth, against the Toronto Raptors in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It will take place at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time here in the United States, and it will be carried on Yes Network and on NBA League Pass as long as you don't live in or around the city of New York or in or around the city of Toronto, Ontario. Toronto's very good. They have the best offense in the NBA It's going to be challenging for the Nets because the Nets have one of the worst defenses in the NBA. However, the Nets can run and they can score. And again, there are positives towards in using the deep bench. And guys will get better and they will get more accustomed and and so forth. Hopefully the bench can perform better than they performed tonight. Hopefully everybody's healthy and everybody stays healthy. Uh, Like I said, the Nets can play pretty well against teams that run and gun, like Houston, like Toronto, because those teams don't expect the Nets to be able to play that style so well, but the Nets do play that style pretty well. The Nets have the number one pace in the NBA which they showed this during the game. And I believe the pace is 104.3 possessions um, per per 48 minutes. I think it is. That's the highest. Nobody has a higher one. So the Nets do play well, and that's uh, they're used to playing like that. They just need to make a couple more baskets and perform a little bit better within that fast pace. But the more you play it, the better you get at it. And uh, so they, uh, Toronto will be heavily favored. But the Nets might be able to make it a better game than what people think because Brooklyn is used to playing it. They're used to playing that style. That's the type of style that they like to play. Okay, I hope everybody is having a great night or great day wherever you are around the world when you watch this video. Yeah, it was a tough loss. It it is frustrating. We have to wait. We have to be patient. The good thing is, look, Jeremy's playing pretty darn well. There's little things here or there. He played really well tonight. I I love the way he ran the show tonight. I thought he made, again, I thought he made excellent decisions. Uh, Hopefully he can play 24, 25 minutes in the next game and have no problems. If that happens, I'll be thrilled. So let's move forward, let go of of the difficult losses. Let's head to Toronto. Maybe we can get a surprise. That would be fantastic. So that is all for tonight. Take care. We will talk to you again. We'll be here two days from now. See you then as Brooklyn Nets versus Toronto Raptors in Ontario.